Hello everyone, welcome back for more. Let's play seconds. You Don't Know Jack Mock 2. A, a, sing, a single player. Thank you. Gameplay functions as follows. You are already familiar with the roles. Very also, much so. We begin immediately. One. This category is The Amazing Randy is Amazingly Randy tonight. We're playing for $3,000 this time. Well, how about this? A little trip back in time for our Middle Ages episode. You know, when folks believed all kinds of crazy stuff. Check this out. According to Medieval Beliefs, which talk show host's defining facial feature indicates he'd give you a night of lust-laden love. Conan O'Brien's freckles, Larry King's liver spots, Jay Leno's extended chin, or David Letterman's gap-toothed grin. Hmm. Why do I bet the chin would be it? Uh, I hate to bring you down, but... Nope. Hey, if you got a minute, take a look at this. Back in the Middle huh. Ages, people with gapped teeth, especially women, were considered exceptionally amorous. So, it'd be Dave. It's no wonder Dave once tried to have a regular feature called Horny Human Tricks. I'm Jeez. looking that under never. The category's gonna be King Arthur at the Urologists. You get it right, I'm putting you up $2,000. Okay, so you probably know the story of the sword Excalibur being stuck in the stone and... You know, of course you do. Why do I waste my time? Imagine Excalibur is stuck in a kidney stone. If King Arthur employs a method commonly used for breaking up kidney stones, what will he use to free his sword? Angioplasty, ultrasonic waves, radiation, or a constant diet of leafy vegetables? Yeah, they pulverize it with sound. Ultrasonic waves are frequently used to break up kidney stones so they can be passed more easily. Which is all well and good, but wait till he has to pass that sword. Ah! Ow. Well, I hope you're all rested up, because you're about to take on a Dissertat. This Dissertat questions category is, collect all four Spanish Inquisition action figures. Okay. Good. You know what's going on? Excellent. Burger Here's King or White Castle. Okay. Steam drill, BK or White Castle. Sliders. <laughs> What you crave? Have it your way. Huh. Flame Royal. Whopper. One more. Small and square. Well, look at you, six out of seven over there. Let's see how it helps out your score. I blame not knowing that one on not really well, going to Burger King and not even having a White bad. Castle. Let's try another question. Oh, we don't have a White Castle in the area. I'm calling this one Party Till You're Putrid. Get this one right, you get a grand. Put your head between your knees, because we're going down. If the latest dance craze is the dance macabre, what will your next party involve? Forming a conga line to the graveyard, losing an eye during the hokey pokey, stabbings during the chicken dance, or beating out Hades in a limbo contest. Dance macabre? The graveyard would be a pretty good place for that. The Dance Macabre was a medieval ritual which symbolized death's ultimate triumph. The dance took place in graveyards. Hey, come on, let's pick this party up a little bit. What are y'all, dead or something? <laughs> oh. Or something, yeah. Five. This one's called, I Dub Thee, Sir Rich and Famous. You get this one, you pocket 2,000 bucks. You, uh, do realize that there are still valiant knights in this world, right? Hey, chivalry didn't die out with Knight Rider, you know. Come to think of it, you'd have a hard time finding somebody who's not a knight. Observe. Which of these men is not an actual knight? Sting, Alec Guinness, Elton John, or Sean Connery? Hmm. Sting or Sean Connery? I don't think Sean's ever been knighted. My close personal friend Sean Connery was finally awarded knighthood in the year 2000 after he and his oh, army of suave older Scottish gentlemen threatened to storm the Queen's drawing room. <laughs> Why didn't you pick this one? <laughs> Just like me, my close personal friend Sting does not have a sir before his name. Not sure why, though. I think he'd make a great knight. I hear he can lance for five hours straight. 
If you call Jesus. tantric action. Coming at you. Armageddon Never is mind. booked. Can we reschedule? And this one's gonna be worth three thousand dollars. Okay, comic book freaks. Show of hands. Who remembers a couple of years ago when Superman actually died in the comic book? He was killed Vaguely? by a monster named Doomsday. Yeah, that's what I thought. If Superman were actually done in by the Doomsday book, how would it most likely have vanquished him? By summoning all the minions of hell, by singing religious hymns to him, by making him pay his taxes, or by subjecting him to medical experiments. I can honestly say I've never heard of a Doomsday book. Or Domesday book in this case. What do you say we check out the right answer? The Doomsday Book was a survey of 11th century England that determined, among other things, how much taxes were owed to the king. Which means the only things for sure in Superman's life are death, taxes, and tight blue underwear. Seven. Well, next, check her out. You get it right, you get 2K. Think fast, it's question time. Say you're playing checkers in London. Where might you expect your opponent to take you when you say, King me, the Tower of London, Buckingham Palace, Westminster Abbey, or Salisbury Cathedral? Buckingham Palace is where they live. Let's go with that. No, silly. That's where British royalty goes to get involved in extramarital affairs. You want to see what the smart money says? Since William the Conqueror took the throne in 1066, British sovereigns have been crowned at Westminster Abbey. So, if you're not any good at playing checkers, forget it. You're never going to have a shot at being King of England. Eight. Here's a little something I call, Froggy isn't the only one who went a courtin'. And this one's worth $3,000. Open wide. If there were a self-help book to help the modern man master the art of courtly love, what would it most likely be called? Men who love to fight, men who love other men's wives, men who only love God, or men who are afraid to love? Hmm, courts. Courtly love. Should've Not an idea. This one. The idea of courtly huh. love involved being in love with a woman of similar or higher social rank and she was usually married to somebody else. Of course, it was all very hush-hush, which is why they called it courtly love instead of shag the queen in the hallway while the king is away at battle love. Nine. Wouldn't you be able to get the category is, stay tuned for those wacky, wacky Visigoths. How does $2,000 sound? Eyes forward, we're going. Which of these TV shows could be about the zany, mixed-up adventures of the first Holy Roman Emperor? Charles the Great in charge, Henry VIII is enough, Magnus P.I., or the fresh Prince William of Orange? First Holy Roman Emperor. Eh? Pope, Pope, the kids have snuck out of the house and are invading Britain. Now, Charlemagne, aren't you supposed to be in charge? <laughs> Charles the Great, or Charlemagne to you groupies, was the first Holy Roman Emperor. And if you don't believe me, check your local listings. I'll do that. On your toes, looks like we've got a when did happen. Okay, listen. Whoa, 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 whoa. Somebody's getting a little antsy. All right. You can call this when did happen my kingdom for a Trans Am. Okay, be honest. What's an episode about feudal kings and fiefdom? Fiefdom? Fiefdom. Peasants without a valiant knight sweeping in to save the day, which leads me to this historic event. Knight Rider valiantly drives into our living rooms. Now, wench, you wouldn't tell me. Did this event happen before Knight Rider premiered? After that, or is it something that has never happened at all? Pretty sure that's before. Wow, that's way before. That should be after. Since Titanic? Oh, Princess Cruise Lines. No. Way before. That'd be after. This Airness joins the NBA. Mm, yeah, that's after. That's all she wrote. Let's see what it does for you. Nice job, my friend. Let's see how that affects the big picture. Okay, come on now. Back to work. Eleven. This 
category is proof that the World Wide Web is round. 2,000 bucks for a correct answer. Yep, there sure was a lot of exploring going on in those Middle Ages. Nobody wanted to stay home, I guess. No TV. Suppose Henry the Navigator were exploring with Netscape Navigator. Which of the following would Henry most likely choose for his homepage? www.netherlands.com, www.italy.com, www.portugal.com, or www.spain.com. I don't know where Henry was from. Not in the least. For the curious, here's the right answer. Henry the Navigator was a Portuguese prince. And like everyone else in those days, he traveled around the world searching for free downloadable porn. And gold. And spices. The category Probably. is going to be the patron saint of skin tight leather jumpsuits. $3,000 for this one. Okay, free your mind. Suppose instead of casting Ursula Andress in the Bond movie Dr. No, Saint Ursula had been cast. What scene would most likely have been included? Bond disguising himself as a donkey. Bond making martinis for a leper colony. Bond being tortured by Irish peasants. Or Bond leading 11,000 virgins to his room. Not a clue. I don't know who Saint Ursula is. Let me show you what I would have picked. St. Ursula led a pilgrimage of 11,000 virgins to the Holy Land. Unfortunately, they only got as far as Germany before they were wiped out by a bunch of Huns. You! How did you get through? There were 11,000 virgins in that room. Not anymore. Thirteen. I'm calling this one. Vegans spend a lot of time on the throne. I got $2,000 says you don't know this one. Hey, did you ever notice how they always portray kings from the Middle Ages as big fat guys who are always gnawing on turkey legs? You know, when they couldn't get their hands on Burger King or White Castle. Well, suppose, well, suppose a king goes vegan and decides to gnaw on tofurkey instead. Which of the following will be dripping on his royal tunic? Tomain, tempura, wheat gluten, or coagulated toadstool? Hmm. Tempura, probably. It says here tempura is a type of painting involving egg yolks. Well, now who would have thought you could paint with eggs, huh? I always thought they were just for homemade enemas. Here's the one the winners pick. Delicious wheat gluten is an ingredient in tofurkey. Of course, once a king goes vegan, that's pretty much the end of that kingdom. Next thing you know, he won't let his knights joust, but they'll have to play duck, duck, goose instead. This one's called the I Don't Want to Get Laid Society. I'm going to give away 3,000 this time. Okay, what would a Middle Ages episode be without mentioning the Society for Creative Anachronisms? <clears throat> Excuse me, the Society for Creative An <laughs> Anachronisms. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just can't think of those guys and keep a straight face. <clears throat> All right, here we go. If you're in the Shire of Clundera, in the Principality of the Mists, are you kidding me? All right, uh, in the West Kingdom, where are you? Honolulu, Los Angeles, New York, or San Francisco? Hmm. The Society for Creative Anachronisms tries to recreate a name everything in medieval terminology, hence San Fran's nerded up name there. Yes, and uh, <clears throat> if you'd like to see just how faithful the society is to keeping everything exactly as it was in the Middle Ages, you can visit them at their website. Yeah. Welcome to the Always in a Hurry. I bet you're a joy to hang out with. Here's Not your this clue. episode. Oof. Stuck in the middle. With you. Yep. Clowns to the left of me, jokers to the right, and here I am. Have fun! Uh-huh. Where Kuwait is. Well, Middle East. The go-betweens. Middle men. Opposite speed 
in the middle, middle ground. Okay. Not rich, not poor. Shorts Elliot novel, huh? Had to guess. We flip someone off with the bourgeoisie. Yes. You can flip Nicely the bourgeoisie done. off. Nicely done, huh? Let's see what you in the proletariat. That's the game. Wow, that was an exciting game. It was a real thrill. You were the best player we've had by far. Now do me a favor, will you? Look to your left. Now look to your right. Now repeat after me. You don't know. Yeah, so, I've had better episodes. Hopefully I will have one next time. I hope to see you then. Enjoy the commercials, folks. I'm out. Mom, Billy's wearing my panties again. Honey, what did you do to this coffee? I don't hate Dad. I just hate you. Well, that's not how I dart a sock. Oh, I can't take it anymore. Sure you can. All it takes is his little turquoise pill, Mother's Little Helper. Ah, uh, Mother's Little Helper. Ma, the dog's humping the cat again. That's nice, darling. Mother's Little Helper may cause severe cramps, loss of appetite, random nosebleeds, upper thigh acne, anal weeping, electric fields of up to 12 volts, ingrown toenails, pubic hair discoloration, withering of the kidneys, tennis elbow, varicose veins, disintegration of the heart, fallen arches, premature ejaculation, night blindness, liver implant, Explosion, epileptic fits, and scurvy in over 24% of users. Hi, I'm Steele Dakota, President of the National Gun Association, and I'm here to tell you about yet another reason why you need to protect your right to bear arms. Consider this all too familiar scenario. Come here, Fluffy. Yeah, nice kitty. You're a good kitty cat. Hey, wait, Fluffy, where, where'd you get that AK-47? Huh? Hey, hey, don't be crazy! Hey, hey, put that down! Wait! <laughs> Whether it's a dangerous home invader or a heavily armed house cat, America, protect your rights and protect yourself. Mr. Johnson's magic powder will make you invisible. Me? Yes, you. Really? How? Just add water and drink. Try it. Okay. <laughs> All right, look in the mirror. It uh doesn't seem to be working. Ah, but close your eyes now. <gasps> Oh my god, it's a miracle! I can't see myself! This stuff really works! Mr. Johnson's magic powder! This stuff really works! Who is that? Where's that voice coming from? A little help here? Psst, hey, listen to this! It's a recording from the planet Mars! Hey, keep it down! I'm watching a game over here! Drink, 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 drink! Women, dude! You can't live with them. You can't have sex without them. Yeah! Knees. They bend. You gotta love knees. I have two of them. And so should you. Knees! Brought to you by the Knee Council. Psst. Hey, listen to this. It's a recording from the planet Venus. Oh my god. I'm having hot flashes again. Do these pants make my butt look big? <laughs> <laughs> Let's go shopping. Yeah! At WTEU, we are keeping Last Tuesday alive. Hey, remember Last Tuesday? Doesn't seem that long ago, does it? Those crazy clothes? What were we thinking when we wore that? And the ridiculous hairstyles. I hope those never come back. Well, tune in to WTEU to enjoy the sweet sounds of that magical time. Last Tuesday, we listened to songs that really meant something by artists like Kid Rock, Britney Spears, and NSYNC. Sure, come Thursday and Friday, we really were kicking ourselves for ever listening to music like that. But now, we can look back and admit we loved them. So join us, won't you? WTEU. All last Tuesday, all the time. Yeah.